Evening all and welcome to Sparrow's World and today, today we have the TLC 2, it has just dropped or it's just been announced anyway. Uh, so here we have the trailer running in the background of a few things we can expect, so have a look at that, then we'll have a look at all the dossiers. So that's the trailer. So we have loads of things to go through on it, loads of cool moments, loads of things which I think are really good, um, and and hope that uh, yeah they really play out well. Um, so first of all, we've had the RG, the Argentavis. It's had a, a small update. So uh, reading from the from the dossier, uh, lording over the, the skies across the island, Argentavis. I'm not even gonna pronounce that bit. Um, has few aerial arrivals. It's a small constellation for the island's other avian creatures. Then the Argentavis seems to have little interest in anything alive. Um, so that's something new, because uh, previously it was attacking everything. So that's going to be cool. It's only going to have to possibly knock out stuff, um, but certainly in the dead things. So you shouldn't have those ever-ending battles you see out in the wild of the RGs. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I don't know if it has adapted the stronger neck to deal with the predators on the island, or if it's uh, lineage derivatives from before the stoop neck became common in carrion-eating birds. Whichever it might be, it was... Um, it has enabled Argentavis to carry smaller creatures within its beak. We saw that in the trailer there. It was carrying a dodo in its beak as well as carrying someone in its arms. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then domesticated. Argentavis is actually slower than the island's far more common pteranodon, but it possesses significantly more stamina and can sustain flight for approximately three times as long. Its weighty stature in comparison to the pteranodon uh, also allows or even allows it to utilize its talons to support the weight of an additional passenger. Considering its saddle doubles as a mobile crafting station, it makes Argentavis an excellent creature for traveling and hauling cargo over long distances. So that's cool. We've got quite a few little updates there then for the um, for the Argentavis. Uh, I like the thing that it can carry something in its beak. That is pretty cool. I do like that a lot. Um, I don't know if that means what we're going to be able to carry in our claws. Obviously, we can carry other players, but um, I guess we'll see shortly. Um, so anyway, the next dossier release was the Parasaur. Now, the Parasaur hasn't had any visual things to it. We saw the RG. We saw what it had done to it in the trailer. It's got the longer feathers. Uh, it's got the longer legs. Um, it's kept the it's kept the uh, the neck sort of similar, but that is pretty cool. Um, whereas the Parasaur, it hasn't had anything done to it, so it's had nothing to do in terms of its visual look. So it's remained the same. Um, the Parasaur is a favourite of some of the wildcard guys or, or girls, one in specific. Uh, in specific. Um, so yeah, it's had a bit of an update. So. Parasaurolophus, Parasaurolophus, yeah, let's go with that, um, was one of the more interesting adaptations of any creature I've seen on the island. Like all Parasaur, it has a signature crest on its head, very docile at first. I've been able to approach the creature without disturbing it. If startled, however, the creature can vocalise a distress call to the surrounding area that warns of danger. So this is the first thing we've got added. So, Parasaurolophus appears to be low on the food chain and is hunted by everything, creatures and humans alike, which explains its skittish nature. It's a good source of meat and hide if you can manage to keep up with it for long enough to kill it. So, we saw in the trailer there, it's going to uh, emanate that, um, that, that noise that comes from it, and it's going to just scare little things away. So, domesticated then, despite being what most tribes consider a relatively useless creature to tame, I once met an interesting woman who had tamed an entire herd of them. She informed me that many overlooked the creature's potential. She even graciously gifted me a fancy saddle to put on my own Parasaurolophus one day. Now... I'm fairly sure this uh, this goes back to Jen from Wildcard, who we saw earlier, or who I mentioned earlier. Who's, it's her favourite dinosaur, so I'm pretty sure that's where that one's come from. 
As a relatively simple creature to domesticate, Parasolophus is commonly one of the first mounts a tribe will be able to uh, acquire. Its ability to run relatively fast for lengthy intervals makes it a solid mode of medium range transportation, though it has almost no ability to defend itself or its rider in a traditional sense. Smaller creatures, however, appear to be frightened by the horn of the Parasolophus, or the Parasol, I'm just going to call it that, um, although it doesn't do much damage. It also has a decent weight bearing capability, which could prove useful for nomadic tribes as they work to establish presence on the island so yeah so it's had a little tweak it may now not be useless because it's not great is it first drives okay it's gonna be able to stare at your raptors your dillos and all the little things like that which sort of bug you all the time so it's a good little addition hopefully it's going to make it really good choice for some uh, some of the new people who join the arc or new tribes or new starters or anything like that Next up then, we have the raptor. Now, we saw loads in this trailer about the raptor. Um, it's pack mentality. It just looked like a scene from Jurassic Park, to be completely honest, um, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, so I can't wait to get a little pack of these tamed up. They're going to be amazing. And that jump ability as well is, wow, that looks cool. So we'll have to see how that works. Um, I think it become really annoying, or is it just going to be something a really cool feature? We'll have to wait and see. But here we go. So the, um, the dossier says, Utah Raptor Prime is an incredibly aggressive subspecies of Utah Raptor found on the island. It tends to travel in small hunting packs, attacking smaller prey with its sharp teeth and enlarged foreclaws. Again, you've got the hook claw from Jurassic Park, you know the thing. When hunting in packs, the pack leader can vocalise a, sig a signal that acts as a battle cry. Be prepared to run or fight if you hear the call of the Utah Raptor. The pack will repeat the call and attack with much greater intensity. So that's similar to the, the Aloes and the um, Die Wolves and, and the one, those ones that we have. We have the Buff, um, which is good. It's a pack mentality. This should kind of be that. So we're going to get that with the Raptors. So that could be quite a scary sight running along the beach. So we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, where, where are we? Uh, one of the faster creatures on the island, Utah Raptor often uses their pack numbers to their advantage by swarming around their prey before it can react. The large curved talon on the second toe of this subspecies seems particularly suited for dealing significant damage. So again, we're back to the, uh, the claw on that one. So... Um, <clears throat> Utah Raptor Prime usually kills its prey when numerous slashing and biting attacks in rapid sequence. Yeah. Uh, what the Utah Raptor lacks in size, it makes up for in ingenuity, I think that says. Rather than cause, uh, rather than chase down smaller creatures, Utah Raptors have become one of the primary combat mounts for roaming bands of raiders, as well as scouts for larger collectives. Those who ride Utah Raptor claim they are difficult to tame, but then fiercely loyal. As a carnivore, once tamed, they require a steady stream of meat to sustain. So this is different. This is suggesting that it might be more difficult than they were to tame, and also that it needs a steady stream of meat. So is this going to eat through things really fast? Um, is that going to be the downside to taming these? Are these going to become suddenly an awesome creature to have? Is it going to be more difficult to tame and also to keep? Um, I don't know. I'd like, I kind of like. I can't wait to see the packs of raptors. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, next up then we have the Sarko and this is something I've been saying for ages needed something doing needed you know something doing to it um, and we can see on the pictures here we've got um, you know it looks it does look different it looks more like a crocodile um, and then we've got it's attacking a megalodon there which is pretty cool so um, it's going to have we saw on the trailer as well the roll ability where it's going to grab stuff and be able to roll and exactly like a crocodile or alligator attack you know um, so that's cool so wild among the island's swamp based threats Sarko Sucus Exhibitor is a lot like what you might expect from a giant crocodile. A patient killing machine. It spends much of its days lazily waiting in the water for prey to walk near. That said, it is not opposed to scurrying onto land and pressing the issue when hungry. So, similar to as we see at the moment, they've spent a lot of time in the water and it's going to come up onto land. A good tactic for escaping many predators is to jump into the water, as most are slow swimmers. Uh, this is a bad tactic for escaping a Sarkosuchus, obviously, as they're actually faster in the water than they are on land. Whenever in land or water, it utilizes a well-rounded arsenal of attacks to display its prowess as a hunter. If it desires to grab a predator and spin into a death roll quickly, uh, it's spin into death roll quickly. Uh, so it can quickly lunge forward for a surprise attack target a foe directly behind it so that's the thing which we've sort of seen before if it's something is directly behind it we're going to be able to spin pretty much on the spot to be able to attack it so that's pretty cool um that would be a really good thing or it's going to utilize its tail but i saw sure i read somewhere about being able to spin directly around um but there we go um domesticating sarcosuchus is a ferocious predator that even caused the fearless piranha to flee at the sight of it so that's quite cool um if we're going into a, an area full of um 
full of piranha, take a Sarkosuchus, and you can't go far wrong by the sounds of that. Uh, despite being a river-dwelling creature, Sarkosuchus seems quite at ease in the oceans. More than a few fishing communities use them as mounts simply to help fight off megalodons or to gain better access to the resources found within the reefs. So again, going down for silica pearls and all of that. So yeah, um, it's got some new abilities, the Sarkosuchus. I hope, I'd like to see it a little bit stronger as well. I think um, it kind of needs that. I think it needs a, a really big... Um, big increase because it's just completely underused at the moment um but yeah on to next then on to next the spinosaur now the spinosaur i think is a great creature um visually i think they could have done better i don't know i it doesn't seem to have changed a lot in my opinion um but it seems like they've added a few new cool abilities so that's pretty cool so wild among the few carnivores on the island that can match tyrannosaurus in size spinosaurus Orliaga? yeah something like that does not match its ferocity a Spinosaurus' four legs and large sail make it fairly swift on land and incredibly fast in the water. Its marvel is arguably the ability to change stances by going from um, a quadruped to biped. The creature is visually distinguished by its spectacular sail. Um, in my travels, I have seen many different and brightly coloured sails as every Spinosaurus appears to have a slightly different palette. The one comforting fact about Spinosaurus is that it seems more at home near water than away from it. Although the creature is more uh, powerful, faster, agile and insatiable while in water, it tends to become less hostile as it gets further away from it. So I think this was in the original dossier that you could run away from it onto land and it would not follow you. Whether that's something which was ever implemented, I don't really remember, I couldn't really tell. Um, that's cool, if you're going to get away from a Spino, run in land, that should sort you out. Uh, on occasion, I only escape Spinosaurus by getting far enough from its lake home to make it lose interest. So there we go, yeah. Um, then it says about domesticated Spinosaurus, an incredibly well-rounded apex carnivore. Faster than a Tyrannosaur in water and able to travel on land like uh, unlike a Megalodon. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, its sole training versatility may be unrivaled. Although its movement speed is slower in a biped stance, it gains considerable attacking strength and mobility in this form. For hunters who wish to have a well-rounded mount, Spinosaurus may be the ideal choice. Now, they always wanted the Spinosaur to be the perfect all-rounder, not excelling in anything. Um, so this update seems like it's going to. So you want to go swimming, go on four. If you want to attack, come up onto two legs. Um, and that's how the Spinosaurus is going to do. I'm certainly going to take an interest in the Spino again. Um, see how it does match up against T-Rexes. Because at the moment, T-Rexes go to for boss battles and things like that. So maybe a Spino in, in biped stands might, um, it might rival it. I don't know. Let's see. I hope it does so it gives a bit more variety and, and we can see what there is. Um, then, last of all, we've got the Triceratops. Now, the Triceratops, we could see in the trailer from before, there was, um, yeah, quite a few little things added to the Triceratops. It's got the the charge. Um, well, I suppose there's only one, really. It's the charge thing, but it's also got herd mentality added to it, uh, which it does kind of had at the moment, but they seem to have buffed that. But the charge thing looks a bit like the, um, I suppose it's like the woolly rhinos and go through things. But here we are. The dossier says then, apparently a crossbreed of a Triceratops and a Styracosaurus. Triceratops Styral uh, has both the characteristic three-horned face of Triceratops and the prominent horned ridge of Styracosaurus. Brachiosaurus. Normally a very docile caring animal, Triceratops becomes aggressive once angered. Triceratops will chase down would-be predators and egg stealers with incredible prejudice. Now it already kind of does that. If you annoy it, it runs after you forever. Um, so running away from Triceratops is harder than it seems due to its ability to charge and ram its targets. So that's a new thing. It's going to be able to charge and ram. It's probably going to give it a bit of a speed buff as it is. Um, I've seen a Triceratops have an especially hostile reaction to the Tyrannosaurus with herds attacking en masse. While not very fast, they are deadly in a group. So are we going to be out on our T-Rex and we're going to get attacked just randomly by wild herds of um, Triceratops? that would be something quite cool because i suppose that if you try and make this perfect environment that's probably what would happen in the world they think it's going to be hunting them so they're going to go and attack it so it makes sense to me uh okay so domesticated a common mount for those that ride dinosaurs triceratops doubles as pack animals and combat dinosaur triceratops bony ridge works excellent as cover from frontal attacks and the dinosaur's charge is incredibly dangerous it is largely protective of its own kind if it senses Jane danger. In the presence of larger carnivores that appear as a threat, Triceratops becomes stronger and rallies the efforts of its nearby species. So is it going to get stronger when there's larger predators around? Because again, that's a pretty cool um, ability. Uh, it's also capable of harvesting a sizable amount of resources with its horns by shredding fruit from the leaves, making it a very useful work companion for smaller tribes. So again, does that mean we're going to get an increased rate of berries than we already have on it? Um, I'm not sure 
sure, but it's the the TLC is coming out at some point today, so we have to test all this. We have to have a look at it all. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's really interesting. There's going to be some really cool things on there. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the RG and the Raptor and the Spino. Those are my uh, my favourite things. I think. Um, yeah, this going to be cool. Um, we'll see how it is. But yeah, definitely going to tame some Raptors. Big pack of Raptors. See how difficult they are actually are to tame now if they change anything at all. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's TLC phase two. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for lots more content. And um, also don't forget to check out my Pixar video. Um, that's coming soon. We're gonna have lots of that on the channel. Really looking forward to that. I think it's gonna be a, just a good fun game. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Have fun.